And as I'm going upstairs, I see that there's light coming from Lori's bathroom. So I called out to her, but she didn't answer. And as I push open the door, I see that the, well, that her curling iron, it, it's still on, and I think that's unusual because Lori's dad is a fireman and she's very aware of fire safety. And as I'm entering, I see these spots and it, it, it's still just, I'm thinking, well, did she spill mouthwash or, or what, what is that? Oh. And then I looked over and there was Lori. She was lying on the ground and uh, her hands were still moving. And there was blood all around her. And so I stepped into the room and I went over to her side and um, I had my sweater on, my, uh, my cardigan sweater, and I just let it drop off my shoulders onto the ground and I I knelt down beside her and I saw that she had a rope around her neck. And so I ran into my kitchen and I got my sharpest paring knife and I went back in and I put my, my fingers underneath the rope to cut it and Lori moaned and, and she let out this little breath and That's when I saw that her throat was cut. And so I, I, I cradled her and I, I tried to keep her together. 